In this video, we're gonna talk about grouping functionality that is available in Gantt and Scope modules of Big Picture. So, what are the use cases in which this functionality is used most often and how you can get the most of this feature? This video is part of our efforts to provide the best possible training around Jira, Confluence and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you would like to support us, like the video, subscribe to the channel and remember you can always reach out to us for any of our paid services like training, consultations or implementations. Okay, so let's dive into the tool. So we are in big picture in one of my boxes that is representing projects and I'm currently in Gantt chart. So grouping functionality is available under data menu and over here we can group tasks. You will see that it is available both in Gantt and Scope module. So we can do grouping in both of these modules. Uh, if we access this, uh, this option, you'll see a list of fields by which we can group. And first thing that you may draw your attention is that on your instance, this list is completely different. So you see completely different fields on which, by which you can group. And yeah, these are not the ones that you are, that are interesting to you. So what we can group by is dependent on the information or on the columns that we are displaying in our view. So I will save this view. If I would switch to the other view, let's say task scheduling, I have completely different set of fields over here. And now if I go to grouping, these different fields are available here for grouping. Uh, I'll switch back to hybrid view because this is where I want to show you uh, these features. But this is really important. If you miss something, if you want to group by the information that you do not see on the screen over here, you probably need to add it first here then you will be able to group by it. Before we do the grouping, notice that we have over here some kind of hierarchy, right? So we have task with subtask, we could have epics on the higher level. So hierarchy exists. And for one of our fields over here, original estimate, we are doing the, 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 the aggregation. So if we go to customize column, you see that I am summing the values. This means that on the parent level, I have some of the values of the children and the parent. So this one is a good example. Uh, children have one, one week each of estimate. Uh, on the parent level, total is five weeks. So probably there is one week for uh, one children, one week for the other and three weeks for the parent. So in total estimate for this uh, part of the tree of, of the work breakdown structure in total is five weeks. This is valuable because we may want to collapse uh, collapse the tree, not to see the children. We do not want to see to that to the, that level of detail. And then we just see the overall uh, estimate. We do not need to drill down to see what is there. But this is based on the hierarchy that we have over here. So it might be box specific. It can differ across uh, different uh, different boxes, but it will basically stay the same unless you move the task uh, and change its parent. But what if we would like to see aggregation of this information of original estimate by some other, uh, by some other thing from different perspective, right? So let's say that I want to see for how much is estimated work associated with specific fixed version. So how much effort we need to spend to deliver fixed version. It wouldn't be very easy now because basically uh, tasks assigned to, to specific fixed version are spread uh, over whole uh, work breakdown structure. But this is where grouping comes in handy. Uh, so I will go to grouping tasks and let's do the grouping by the fixed version. This is what is interesting to us. Uh, actually, just to show you, I will also do the grouping by component, but I will do the it, it, it lower. 
So what we will have now is we will have grouping by the fixed version on the highest level and below that grouping on the component. So I will apply this. Big picture needs a moment to basically render this. All right, and you can see that our hierarchy seems to have changed. Uh, so let's make this bit larger. So you can see that fixed version one, this is the one that is interesting currently to, for me, contains these issues. And below that we have uh, division by components. And over here we can see what is the total uh, original estimate for all the issues assigned to fixed version one. So now we are not looking for the sum from the perspective of work, work breakdown structure hierarchy, but from the perspective of uh, fields or, or basically issues with the values in the fields that we that we just grouped. Uh, so now we see that, okay, for the version one, it's six weeks of work, a bit over, uh, and inside the version one for component one, just two days. Two important things to mention here is that for big picture to show you aggregate of the values over here, the column needs to have aggregation set. So basically, if there will be a non-aggregation, uh, obviously there will be no aggregation over here too. Uh, so, so this was first important thing. Second important thing is that although it may seem like that, that we, that we change the hierarchy over here, it is not the case. Hierarchy is still there in the background. Uh, the, the one that we had previously, so the epics, tasks below them and subtasks below them. Uh, it is just on top of that hierarchy, we are displaying uh, these tasks slightly different, basically grouped by the issues that we wanted to. Uh, so these were two important things to mention. And this is basically the first use case we see most often used if we want to see our data, our aggregations from different perspectives than the standard work breakdown structure hierarchy and uh, actually components or, or fixed versions uh, grouping by those two is pretty common if you want to check uh, how much work or how much time was spent uh, to deliver uh, those. Other grouping could be, for example, by assignee uh, to see how much time a uh, given person spent uh, on, in the project. The second use case is actually on the Gantt chart itself, on the Gantt diagram itself. So you can see that on the Gantt diagram, we also have these new boxes. So not only our tasks were grouped uh, on the left side on the list of the tasks, they were also grouped on the Gantt chart. So now we can see where on the timeline work on the fixed version V1 is currently planned. So we know where the work on fixed version one starts, where it ends. The same goes to component. So component is basically involved till the middle of September. So it gives us pretty nice overview of where specific things can be delivered. Uh, we could have, for example, the same if you have a case where uh, some external providers are delivering work for you. Uh, you could put that information on the issue in the dedicated field, do the grouping by that field, and then you would know from when to when these providers are, uh, are needed, when they will be working for you and when they are no longer uh, involved in the project. Uh, so this is second pretty, pretty good use case for that. And mm, yeah, I think that the one with the aggregations is used a bit more often, but I like this one uh, a lot too. The last use case I wanted to mention might seem not quite intuitive, but in daily use, uh, I, I, I happen to, to use it very often. So it might be useful also for you. So what is the third use case? It's actually searching. So you may think that we have a pretty good quick filters. Why not just use them for searches? And yes, you should use quick filters first, but there are cases 
where they are not sufficient. So I will add assignee over here. And let's imagine the situation where you want to make pretty complex search. So something like uh, show me all the tasks that are uh, assigned to Tom or Kaya that are assigned to fix version one. So basically you would need to have search like uh, task has to be done, has to be assigned to Tom or, or Kaya and to fix version one. So in quick filters, you could do one of these. So search, okay, we are, we'll apply those two filters, switch to or, and now we have everything that is assigned to Tom or Kaya. But to do the second part of the search, the version one, we would need to have like second uh, logical indicator here and, and do this after this. We, we cannot do that with quick filters. We could do the search by JQL query, but for most people, this is just too slow. With grouping, we if we group by the field that we are looking for, we can do this search pretty quickly, right? So basically we are doing what I just did, applying quick filters with a proper logic indicator, and we basically look for the values that we are interested. Okay, V1 are over here where we'll all be in one place. So I do not need to scroll throughout whole 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 uh, list of the tasks. It's just enough that I find it in one place and then I'll see all the issues that are assigned to Tom or Kaya and are assigned to fix version one. So if in certain cases for certain searches, these quick filters are not sufficient for you because uh, we can have only one logical indicator between all applied filters. Grouping may be of help for you. Okay, that's it for this video. Hope it was useful and you will be able to apply some of the things that I've shown in your daily work. If you have any questions, reach out to us. If you're looking for any ideas how to improve your work, also feel free to contact us. I'm sure we'll be able to help. Thanks for this video and see you in the next one.